not there's the audience doesn't have a lot of knowledge of classical music so for those of you that know music already you may have to sit through some things that are very basic to you and but i thought that it was the safest assumption was to assume that it's an initiated well educated audience but not one that necessarily knows the details and intricacies of hindustani sangeet is that a fair assumption as far as questions go please ask away you can interrupt me you can stop me you can wait till the end whatever works for you will work for me now i there's two people i want to make sure do you understand urdu at all or no you do because every now and then i would jump into it because otherwise i'm too conscious that i have to speak english all the time is that fair so with that we will start uh the first thing that i want to talk about is that the music that we refer to is called hindustani sangeet and one of the questions that i'm often asked especially when i present to pakistani audiences why is this hindustani sangeet why not pakistani sangeet or why not hindustani and pakistani sangeet and the answer in the highest terms is that music does not necessarily follow geographical boundaries in the tradition there are two traditions of music in india and pakistan one is known as hindustani sangeet and the other is known as carnatic sangeet the music of pakistan in north india is known as hindustani sangeet and the music of south india is known as carnatic sangeet this obviously does not follow the india pakistan divide and thank god for that so we are happy that we don't have to always have geographic boundaries in every discussion that we have now what i want to talk about are two basic things in music the first is known as sur and the second is known as la and what i want to do today is i want to start with the basic notes of sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa and take us all the way to rag and then start with the basic words or count of rhythm and take us all the way to tal you'll have to play along with me because one of my personal goals today is to make sure that all of us learn how to count beats because that's one thing i find lacking in pakistani audiences their tempo is very good like when they clap but they don't know how to count as well as they know how to maintain tempo so please play along with me as i try to go through these things okay if it's boring just pretend that you are playing along okay so the first thing is what is sur sur is essentially a basic note of music you may have heard the words do re mi sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa any one sounds of these is known as sur okay now uh, throughout this uh, presentation you will see paintings these are all from my personal collection so sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa these are the basic seven notes and the first thing to remember is that as we go from sa to re the frequency increases to ga ma in this direction frequency is increasing what does that mean scale the notes become sharper and higher in pitch as we move towards the left the frequencies go down okay now as you will see it says seven notes but if you get into music you find out that the number of notes is in not seven but 12 and the names are seven so it's confusing but there are 12 basic notes of music and this is true not just for hindustani sangeet also for carnatic sangeet also for american sangeet also for latin music there are 12 notes of music no matter what school of music what geographic country we're talking about so we will convert these to uh, 12 notes but let's first talk about each one of the notes we have sa re ga ma pa dha ni Does everyone know these uh, you guys have heard that so the first thing that i want to show you is that i have made a table which shows their indian name their pakistani name and the western name because this can be confusing because different um, 
especially between Indian and Pakistani terminology, there are some things that can cause confusion. So when you look at the notes, Sare Gama Padhani, in India, this is called Shadaj. We call it Kharaj, and it's equivalent to Do or Si in Western music. Then we have Re, which in Pakistan is called Rikhab, but in India is called Rishab, and of course it is Re and D in Western music. Then of course we have Gandhar, which is Ga, Madham, which is Ma, Nikhad, which is Ni, Deva, Pancham, which is Pa, Devat, which is Dha. So these are the notes. So we should remember that in the terminology, Sa is Kharaj, Re is Rikhab, Ga is Gandhar, Sare Ga, Ma is Madham, Pancham is Pa, Dha is Devat, and Ni is Nikhad. It's important that we know these notes as we will find out later. There is some history behind that. Everyone with me so far? If I'm going too fast or slow, just let me know. Okay? Now, one of the things to remember is that there are three types of notes we can have. Now, this is important. You can have flat notes, which are the lower frequency ones. They are called komal notes in Urdu and in Hindi. They are the natural notes which are called Shuddh and there are the sharp notes which are called Tivar. So the lowest one is called Komal, the highest one is called Tivar and the natural form is called Shuddh. Uh, please take all the notes you want but anyone who wants these slides can have them too. So there's never a problem with that. Okay. So the next thing is every one of these notes is available in the natural form. So seven notes are those, the natural form. The sur of ma is available in the natural and in the higher form, which is tivar. And the rest of the sores, re, ga, tha, ni, are available in the natural and in the lower komal form. There is no komal ma. There is only shuddha ma and there is tivar ma. And there is no Komal and Tivar in Sa and Pa, there's only the Shuddh Sa and Shuddh Pa. So you will see we have seven varieties, uh, seven notes, all have Shuddh, so seven. Then we have one note which has two, uh, which has a higher one Ma, eight. And then we have four more which have a lower Komal form, so twelve. And that makes the twelve notes, okay. And this table shows you Sa, there's only one. Re, we have lower and higher. Ga, we have lower and higher. Tha, we have lower and higher. Ni, we have lower and higher. And Ma, we, ha uh, uh, Ma, we have lower and higher as we show them. Okay? So, all, uh, five notes have two forms. Two notes have only one form. And I had already shown you that the frequency increases this way. And if we add the Komal and Tiva source, this is our basic scale. Now one of the things that we need to know is that the frequency at this point, Sa, doubles when we get to this point. And when frequency doubles in engineering or in mathematics, it's called an octave. The doubling of frequency is known as octave. If it's 10 times, it's a decade. So this one scale of 12 notes is known as octave. And it is known as Shai in Urdu. What do we call it? Haanji, Saptak, Saptak is the word in Urdu and the thing to remember is that in one Saptak frequency doubles from the beginning to the end. So as we move this direction frequency increases and this is known as one Saptak. Okay and I know this is a lot but once you have slides and you have nothing better to do one evening you can revise and say I really feel like counting beats tonight I must do that. Okay. So there are three octaves that are primarily used in singing. Very few singers use more than three octaves. In fact, um, to some extent, it's a show or a show of unnecessary show of vocal skills to employ more than three octaves, because using more than three octaves effectively is very difficult. So most singers would use two and a half to three octaves, and that is usually sufficient. 
This one is known as Mandar Saptak, which means the lower octave. This one is known as the Madhya Saptak, the middle one. And the third one is known as Tar Saptak, the higher note. So we have three main octaves, Madhya Saptak, Mandar Saptak and Tar Saptak. Ji. Show you the... Show. So you have noticed how the frequency increases, the voice becomes, the pitch becomes sharper. So do we see, uh, everyone I think is with us now, how frequency increases. Now we have to go to the word rag. I, how many of us have not heard the term rag? So everyone has. And the definition of rag is very simple. It's a combination of notes subject to certain rules and regulations. That's what it is. And un one of the differences between Western and e Desi music is that Desi music is not written and relies very, very heavily on improvisation. So if you were to take any rag and write down all its rules and regulations and stipulations, you will probably end up with half a page or one full page. There is no, nothing more to do that. Everything else is left to the imagination, to the mind of the musician. There are very few rules, there are very few stipulations. So one of the things I want to do today is want to go through each one of those rules which apply to the rag, so we all know how is a rag defined, what are the various things that define the rag. Okay? Now this, of course, uh, these are paintings again, um, these are rag mala paintings, there are about 120 paintings like this. Each one represents a specific rag. So there is a visual representation of all major rags. For example, we have Bahar here, we have Todi here, we have Basant here. So these, I just put some, a few of them because that would make the slide look more interesting. So let's talk about the rag. Arohi, Amrohi, Pakad, Vadi, Samvadi, Anuvadi, Vivadi, Kan, Jati, Vakt, and Ras. These are the elements of a rag. There is nothing more or nothing less that's needed. Once you know these, the rest is up to your imagination, to your skills, to your facility. So what is Arohi and Amrohi? When we go high in frequency, from low to high, we are moving right. We are ascending. That's called Arohi. When we move from right to left, we are descending in frequency, that's called avrohi. So when we go sare, gamma, padha, nisa, we are going up in frequency, arohi. When we come back, sani, dhapa, maga, resa, we are going down. And in a rag, you always have a definition of arohi and avrohi. The second thing is pakar. These are a few characteristic catch phrases, combinations, nire ga, nire sa, sani dhapa, sare gama, sare nisa, that define different rags. Some characteristic catch phrases, which are combinations of notes that can be used to identify rags and to bring out their true essence. So can be any For, uh, there are all sorts of permutations, but each rag has its own pakar. So they have their own pakar. Each rag has their own pakar. Now, in then we have the five kinds of notes. The first note is known as Vadi Sur. Vadi, and what that means is the Sur that is used the most. So if in a rag, let's say Sa, Karaj, is used the most, it is known as sa, uh, the Vadi Sur. Now second to the Vadi Sur is the Sam Vadi Sur, which is the used uh, note that is used, the, uh, that is second most used note. Okay, so vadi is the high, uh, most frequently used. Samvadi is the second most frequently used note. 
then all other notes that are permissible are known as anuvadi okay and then we have the vivadi sur which is forbidden so out of the 12 notes there are certain notes that are forbidden to be used in specific rags because a rag doesn't have 12 notes it can only have seven maximum seven minimum five so any notes other than those between five and seven are known as vivadi source and they are not allowed to be used in that rag and then we have the kansur which is actually not allowed but expert musicians can teasingly refer to it to create an effect that they desire that is typically not used by novice musicians because if they used it they would be making a mistake it's typically used by musicians who have such reputation that people know they're not making a mistake they are actually trying to create a specific effect so there is um, the rules for the maestros are a little, little different than those are for novice musicians then we have jati i already mentioned that there are three types of rags that they can have five notes six notes and seven no more no less ragas which have five notes are known as odav pentatonic rags which have six notes are hexatonic or khadav and the ones which have seven notes are known as sampuran rags so we can have five six or seven rags and then we have a certain time of each rag every rag can only be played in a three hour period which is why very very rarely does a performance of a rag go more than three hours because you would be crossing into the territory the time territory of a different rag so traditionally and if we follow the rules a rag cannot be performed for longer than three hours because the time changes the scale changes and we'll talk a little bit more about time theory and then there is an emotional essence of a rag some rags are happy some are sad some are angry some show bravery some show mystery but you can only have typically one ras in a rag so in definition of a rag we have arohi ascent avrohi descent pakad catch phrases vadi sur dominant sur samvadi second dominant anuvadi the allowed sors vivadi the forbidden notes kan sur that we teasingly use then we have the jati then we have the time and then we have the ras we okay with this now these are paintings of the nine ras there is a book known as natya shastra which is about 2000 years old that was written by bharat mani in that book covers all performing arts it covers music it covers theater it covers dance it's in my opinion the most complete book ever written on the performing arts now that book defines nine basic emotions known as the nine ras and these nine paintings which i have put together are those different emotions it can be wonder it can be fear it can be eroticism it can be beauty and these nine emotions are available to performers of art there's no more than nine there's no less than nine now in music we do not use all nine in fact we only use now this slide isn't showing very well but we only use six of the ras and these are known as shohi which is playfulness gravity which is gehrai karun or which is gham sadness pathos sakoon which is peace husn which is beauty and heroism which is bahadri so we have six ras available to us in vocal and instrumental music of course if we were doing dance we would have all nine and if we were doing drama we will have all nine no means nine ras means essence no ras means the nine emotions in music we use only six of them they don't use eroticism for one uh, they don't um, uh, use uh, fear which is another one and they don't use wonder yeah because that's more for theater yeah. now the as i mentioned early there is a time for each rag and the day is divided into eight equal periods these periods are known as pehar as we say do pehar se pehar these are different periods now certain theorists 
believe and they are accurate that these rags are not uh, these pairs are not of equal duration but after thinking about whether i want to go into that detail i decided it's best to just say we have eight pairs there are 24 hours 24 divided by 8 of three pairs again so if you hear that some pairs can be longer than the other in certain cases that is correct but not relevant to what we are discussing here the takeaway should be that each rag has a certain time of performance That's the important thing to know now if you look at the rags we have four morning and four afternoon periods each one three hours in duration okay and if we go to the next slide we should know that a rag can only be performed at its correct time it is very difficult to convince a musician to perform a rag at the wrong time for example some of the ragas like bilas khani todi bhairavi bhairo these are rags of the morning and they have lost popularity because most concerts are done in evenings and it's difficult to or it's incorrect and wrong to perform them in the evening then the shankara rag then uh, madhumad sarang these afternoon rags are also going out of vogue now recently there has been a lot of change and i've seen a lot of concerts in the us and in india not yet in pakistan being performed in the morning in the afternoon to allow all rags to be performed then these i what i've shown is that this is the first pair din ka pehla pair we have bhairo we have deshkar gunkali jogia as we move towards the later hours of the day one general thing you will notice is that the lower frequency notes are used in the morning and by the time we come to the evening higher frequency notes are used so one general thing to remember is the white notes or the lower frequency notes are used in the morning and slowly we move into the sharper notes in the evening okay and then rag is typically play either sung or played on the harmonium or the sarangi or the dilruba or the sarod or the sitar or santur or uh, such instruments okay one of the things i want to do today is use rag malkos to demonstrate each one of the things that we spoke about so that we will know how they are employed the first thing is that it's arohi ascent is very simple sa ga ma dha ni sa it's avrohi is sa ni dha ma ga sa vadi sur which was is which sur is the vadi sur is it the one most used or least used no most used vadi is the most used for this is madham which is ma the second most used sur in malkons is kharaj which is sa then ga tha and ni are allowed to be used but pa and re are forbidden if they are forbidden that means we can only have five notes and that means it's a pentatonic rag known as the odd of rag okay it's uh, ras is virta which is bravery heroism and the time is midnight to 3 am that 3 hour period and what i did was i put some free uh, film songs here that you may or may not be familiar with but you can uh, google them and listen to them which are based on pure malkos rag and that leads to a point that i like to make you don't always have to sing a khayal something heavy to honestly communicate and perform a rag you could be doing a film song and do a very very pure performance of the rag for example the song that we have akhian sang akhian lagi aaj it's one of the finest songs in rag malkons and it observes every single one of the rules of malkons and then recently in love you hamesha ek thi ladki i thought was a wonderful song in malkons and then we have um, uh, a very famous song in pakistan pyar nahi hai sur se jisko wo murakh insaan nahi that's malkons as well of course the famous one from beju bavra mantar pathari darshan ko is again malkons so a rag as long as you know what you are doing you could even be humming a song a pop song for that matter and it could be in a rag and observe all the rules with that i am going to ask uh, asif and arif to perform malkons rag for us so you can have an idea how we do 
uh, uh, improvisation based on these very very few rules here sure so the feeling of the is heroism yeah bravery and heroism and, and, and so whatever competition that they yeah always you typically do not have more than one ras in a rag you try not to now there are some rags which have two ras but in a particular performance you stick to one depending on the mood that you have and this is actually a very funny rag as the tune i'll let you know the theory behind uh, the story is behind malcon says that it conjures spirits it attracts the ji jins and the paris and the jins and everything and that's what it has been used for so if you look at a lot of paintings a lot of old stories you will hear that rooms became inhabited Uh, by dijins or by paris or fairies because malcos was performed here so if you come to t2f again and you see strange these things happening we know what happened here <laughs> okay no no i'm going thank you so much as long as you want as much as time you have as much skill as you have as much patience as the audience says but these are the rules there's not much more to it there are some traditions and some um, uh, other some singers have sung in certain ways that people like to follow but the rules of the rag are the few basic ones that i mentioned any question you look like you have a question yeah yeah we talk a lot about it in a bit yeah Do you want to wait or do you, we must go now? We talk a lot about it. You're going to be sick and tired of the clapping. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the next thing that I want to talk about is tart. Now, you have a dance performance here on the 4th. The tart word used in dance is completely different. 
Does anyone know what thaat means in Kathak dance? The style of standing. Gat means the style of walking. But gat and thaat in vocal music are instrumental music are completely different. So thaat is actually a system of classifying rags and it's a system which de has defined 10 groups of rags known different groups with different names and usually a rag falls in one or the other thoughts why i say usually because it's not a it's a flawed system it's an incomplete system and the reason that i always teach it is because it's easiest for us to relate to western scales if we talk about thoughts but there are many rags that do not fall in any one of the ten thoughts and there are many rags that could fall uh, in one or two of the rods. But there are certain benefits of having tar, there are certain disadvantages, and if you ask me, we'll, we'll go into the detail, but let's first look at the thoughts. There are 10 thoughts, and it's really a melodic mode, which is a thought. What does that mean? So we should first know what the rules are of thoughts before we get into what it means. A thought has seven notes, not 12, not 5, not 6, just 12, 7 notes. The second, the notes in a thought are always in sequence. Sare gama padha nisa, sani dha pa We don't go anywhere else. Then we cannot have two forms of the same note. That you cannot have shuddh nikhad and komal nikhad. It will have to be one or the other. And that obviously means it has seven notes. And a thought cannot have different ascent and descent. If we are going Sare Gama Padha Nisa all should, we have to come Sani Dhapa Magarisa all should. And a thought cannot and should not be sung. It's just a classification system. It's not really a song. So it just defines which one of the notes are there. And if we look at the thoughts, we'll go through Bhairav thought is the first thought that I want to go about and its equivalent in Western music is known as double harmonic. And we have the Shuddha Sa, the Komal Re, the Shuddha Gandhar, the Shuddha Madham, uh, the Shuddha Pancham uh, and Komal Devat and we have the uh, Shuddha Nikhad. One form of each note will define that and I have put down certain popular rags of the same thought. If you go to the next one, sorry, sure. All seven notes. No, no, they fall, but they only used five of those seven. Let me say it again. The rag that he played right now is Malkos and it belongs to the Bhairavi thought, which is Sare Gama Padha Nisa, all lower frequency. But it just doesn't, it doesn't have to use all of them. The rag doesn't have to use all of them. But it decides to use five, which belong to that thought. Do you want me to do this again? Because I never thought of it, but this is a confusing point. Okay. Let's say I have in my wallet bills of 5,000, uh, 1,500, 150 rupees. I can pay anyone using combinations of hundreds or combinations of one hundreds or something. But I, I don't have to use all, right? But I also cannot have a 2,000 rupee note because it doesn't exist, it's not allowed, it's counterfeit. So you have the whole spectrum of seven notes in a thought and you can pick any five, six or seven of them. I think you understand it now, right? Okay. Is that point clear? Okay. Now, this is another thought, which is the Aeolian mode, and we call it the Asavari thought. And it has some very popular rags, uh, such as Darbari, such as um, Adana, Asavari, Desi, Jaunpuri, Dev, Gandhar. Now, I won't take you through all of them because it's kind of boring, but I want to take you through this slide. If you do decide that you want this presentation, which I would love to share, you will notice that there is a little gramophone over here. And the way I have set it up is, if you click on the gramophone, you will hear the whole thought. So whenever you see the gramophone sign, you go to this little dog and you click on it and you will hear the sound. 
because uh, sometimes I don't have the luxury of having live performers with me, so I always add MIDI files or MP3 files to my presentations. Yes. We, uh, you can take it on uh, um, USB from me or I can email it to you. Yeah. It's a huge presentation in terms of size because uh, there's too many pictures. <laughs> okay. So these are, then there's the Bhairav, the Bhairavi Thart, which is the Pharisian mode. We have Bilawal, which is Ionian, of course, Kafi, which is Dorian, Kalyan, Lydian, Kamad, which is Mixolydian, and then we have two Marwa and Purvi Thart, which do not have Western equivalents. But 10 Thart's, seven notes, no uh, difference in ascent and descent, and they are not performed. This is a classification system. Now, personally, I'm not a very big fan of the Tart system because it's flawed. There are many rags. For example, Eman Kalyan, one of the most common rags that is performed all over the world, uh, has two forms of a note, and that is not allowed in any one of the Tarts. So there's a lot of rags that do not comply to it. The reason I like it is that it is very well established, and certain rags cannot be distinguished without knowing the Tart they are in. For example, there is a rag known as Bhopali, five notes, and it doesn't use ma and ni, right? Sare ga And uh, uh, there's another rag known as Deshkar, which has the exact same notes, no difference. But in order to differentiate the rag, one has been placed, Deshkar is placed in Bilawal Thaat, Bhopali is placed in the Kalyan Thaat and the whole style changes, the notes are exactly the same. So that is one of the benefits of the Tart system, that you sing, if you sing those five notes, in the style of Bilawal Rags, Bilawal Ang Rags, it becomes Deshkar. If you sing them in the form of Kalyan Ang Rags, it becomes Bhopali. Okay? So these are the things. The next thing we talk about is Lair. This is very near and dear to my heart because I think Pakistanis and Indians have extremely good leh, but rather poor ability to count beats. So they can do the tali very well, and we are going to beat this one to death. You are going to ask me to move on, okay? And, but counting is something we will learn today. So let's talk about, first of all, what is leh, its tempo in music. And the reason we have two of everyone here is because I'm an engineer, so I must have symmetry and balance. There's no other reason, so we won't read into that. The standard tempo is known as Madhale. Okay? And in ancient times when we didn't have our phones or our watches, what was the one thing that beat in rhythm all the time? Heartbeat. And that is usually 72 uh, or depending on how hyper you are, it can be 80 or something. So that is known as Barabarle. Barabar means equal equal to your heartbeat. That is the standard layer and it has been standardized at 80 beats per minute. You go to half of that, it becomes Balampat in Pakistan, Vilambit in India. So with B in Pakistan, with the V as in Victor in India, and it's 40 beats per second. You further ha uh, half it down, it becomes Ati Vilambat, which is 20 beats per second. Now, if you double the Barabar layer, it's 160 beats per second, that is known as Drut. And then we have the Anudrut, which is 320. So five basic tempos. Now one of the things, if you looked at the ancient treatises of music, like the Garanths, the old Hindu uh, scriptures from Bharatmani, the Vedic things, you will notice that the real rule is that you can double your tempo, you can quadruple it, half it, or divided by four, but you cannot typically move from one slowly and progressively. But in the last hundred or so years, singers have been doing that, and pretty much all of them have been doing it. If you were a purist and you wanted to find fault with any and every singer, you could say that they should not be doing anything but doubling or quadrupling the leh. Okay? So we didn't plan it, but Peter, can you play Teen Tal and Madh Leh? Okay. Na, din, din, na, na, din. Now we double this, it would be Okay, and if we have it 
अनुद्रोत एंड देन अब बिठाओ धेन धेन ना ना धेन धेन ना इसकी बलंपत बिठा दो धेन सेम वर्ड्स बीन प्लेड इन द फोर फाइव डिफरेंट टेंपोस ओके The next thing is what is tal. Remember, we had sare gama padha nisa, and we combined that to make rag. Now we have a tempo which we will combine to make tal. I just need a drink because I'm talking too much. Okay, so sur makes rag, le makes tal. Okay, a tal is a rhythmic time cycle, and these again are. Uh, 16 paintings of Rakhmala <laughs> that I just put in there. When you have the slides, you can actually zoom in and see they're pretty high-quality images. Tal, of course, is played on things such as the dholak, the tabla, the mirdang, the daf, even on the wall. It's a percussion thing. Percussion instruments are used for tal, whereas different instruments were used for rag. Okay. Now we had sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa. those were the basic notes the words the syllables of tabla are a little less strict they are more than 20 but 14 are considered standard and the way they go is din tin tha tha din din tha tere kede te ke tha tere kede tha tere kede tha tere kede tere kede tere kede tha Are the words that you speak, and you will notice you get the same things. Na din din na na din din na na tik din na na din din na. So the words that we speak from our mouth are the ones that he replaces over there. And when you combine these words, you make a tal. Okay, I'm glad I stopped because I have so much fun in this. I sometimes forget. <laughs> okay, so these are a few of the major tals. and each tal has a certain number of beats so let's take dadra which is a simple tal very simple one of 6 beats tha tin na ta tin na 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 Uh, in film and light music three main tals are used dadra six beats kehrwa seven eight beats and rupak seven beats that's 99% of our film songs and television songs so we'll next go to rupak which is seven beats tin ta ke tin tin ta ke tin ke tin ta ke tin tin ta ke tal is also known as mughlai who knows why it's also known as mughlai the last mughal emperor bahadur shah zafar was also a poet and most of the ghazals that he wrote were set to the rupak tal of seven beats and therefore it also came to be known as the mughlai tal because a mughal who wrote poems the ghazals were written in seven beats okay Now let's talk about Kehrwa, the number one most popular tal in the whole world, not just in India and Pakistan, in the whole world. It's also known as four by four. Da tri ke din din 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 da tri ke din da tri ke din. familiar with this this is played at homes in weddings in songs all the time okay now just for the sake of completion because i have put some others there there's jhaptal which is 10 beats then na then then na then
and then of course we have ikthala din din dhage tirkit tu na katta dhage tirkit din na din din dhage tirkit tu na katta dhage tirkit din na so these are the tals we use the same words a certain count in the become tals but i haven't used teen tal because teen introduced it yet teen tal is the tal that is taught first to most singers and to all tabla players it's also the most difficult one so it's kind of strange in the music that you are taught the most difficult tal in the beginning and by the time you master it you have already figured out the rest so in our exercises today we are going to talk about teen tal but before i do that i want to define five terms the first term is sum which is the first beat in the cycle why is it important one because that's where you start counting but you never say wa wa or subhanallah or mashallah or kya baat hai at any point other than at the sum anyone who does that is considered uh, depending on how uh, how uh, bad of a mood you are in you can call them <laughs> with novices or you can call them unpar or so on it is wrong to praise a musician at any other point then the sum the sum is very pronounced and in my opinion a listener who can identify the sum has taken care of half of listening they have understood it in dance and i don't know how many of you are coming to see farah's performance on the fourth sum is even more pronounced because a dancer will become still on sum let a few cycles go and then start again so sum we want to learn to identify sum today okay The second most important thing is tali which is literally a clap and it's a stress point and you always show it like this when you are clapping you show it, you do not show tali like anything else these are very important things because when you are in a concert and you are listening to music you want to appear to be a sophisticated educated and traditional listener you do not want because this is all about tradition about following rules and about making sure that things remain faithful and true as we move okay so tali is always like this and then we have khali which is negation of stress khali is always like this so you will hear a lot of people do this and this in certain forms and we must remember three points sum which is also a tali but a really strong tali <laughs> tali which is a clap like this and khali which is a negation of stress and that some people do many thing like i usually do this but there's a jerk and different people have but some everybody knows when some has arrived and that's when you say wah wah or subhanallah okay so then we have avardi which is a complete cycle if it is 16 beats the avardi is 16 beats long if it's rupak it's seven beats long if it's sawari panch tal it's 15 beats long and if we have divisions within the avardi they are sort known as vibhag but we'll go through this because this is something i like we'll until we have figured it out ji yeah no no there's no ascent and descent it remains the same now to be very accurate there are certain tals known as sawari where we have a little climbing in a scent as we speak the theka like den ta ke den ta ke den kr den den dha ge dha ge den kr den den dha ge trik ke den na gen na ka ta ke te den na dha ke te dha te te den so you will see in this tal we had different tempos go up and down so i just wanted to have an accurate answer because they're recording it and you know i don't want to say that but generally it maintains the same tempo okay so we have teen tal which is na then then na na then then na na then then na na then then na 1 2 3 4 5 6 Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sum. Okay. This is the sum. 
everyone will remember it because we are going to make sure we, we are going to go spend some time on this. The next thing is Tali. There are three Talis in Teen Tal on the first, fifth and thirteenth beat. One, five and thirteen. So we will remember this. Now I can't do the Tali. Shai, will you do the Tali because I have the mic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are the talis. Then we want to show the khali which is on nine. So let's do that. This is the khali. and respectful audience will always do this okay so we have de demonstrated some tali and khali there are four vibhags four divisions very similar three of them are exactly the same nadin dhinna nadin dhinna and the last nadin dhinna the third one only dhin dhin changes to tin tin so there are four divisions of four beats each in teen tal each one is called vibhag and then the avardi is 16 beats long and I wrote these in pictures because it's easier to understand an avardi. And if we combine it into one page, this is our complete avardi. Okay? These are our four vibhags. This is our tali and our sum. And then we have tali, khali, and tali. Okay? In these 16 beats, we can do a lot of things. All improvisation, all playing, all teasing is done within it. But I have a question first. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, one loop, unit loop. Absolutely. That's actually a good way to look at it because then you see it as a circle. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So the next request that I have is if you would play along with me as we start counting, and then I will show you how we improvise things, but we finish on the first beat always. Now, with uh, the videographer, I, I have to set this down just for a bit, but I'll talk really loudly so we keep recording.
again remember if you click here you will get to listen to the sound of this song and you can practice your clappings i have a feeling all of you are going to do that every day for the rest of your lives just to make sure you're in tempo <laughs> okay then what are the components of music ajza what makes good music there are four areas of music that make one a competent musician the first one is known as rag dhari that is your proficiency over the rag how well do you know the rag how well do you perform it how well do you improvise a rag is known as rag dhari and that is one of the four components the second one of course is lay kari symmetrically how well do you know tempo and lay and rhythmic time cycles that is known as lay kari so knowing rag is rag dhari knowing lay is lay kari and these are the two basic things that are in the vocabulary in the domain of proficiency of all musicians but the remaining two are only known by the really good musicians this is the easy stuff and this is the difficult stuff so what is the difficult stuff it is known as rudari which is the aesthetic beauty how do you make your improvisation is it symmetrical does it sound good to the ear people who visualize music like me does it have balance or is it tilted towards one end of the octave or the other so it is the aesthetic beauty of the compositions that you do that make it different like uh, in kathak we were going to play it but then uh, decided not to there's one division of seven which is really beautiful ek do teen char panch che sat aath 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 na then then na so what happens is you have to divide these ek do teen char panch che sat aath 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 to ek do teen char panch che sat aath na then then na so there has got to be a aesthetic beauty in this thing otherwise one two three can be really boring like really boring <laughs> so if you wanted aesthetic beauty and then there's another one ek do teen char panch che sat aath ta 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 so you slow it down and you do that and these are not simple divisions because dividing 16 by 3 is difficult itself but doing it by 7 is even more nasty but you do it and then you do it often enough that you do it right okay so aesthetic beauty in tal in rag is important balance you don't want like did you notice ek do teen char panch che sat aath balance ek do teen char panch che sat aath 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 the ek do teen char panch che sat aath the ek do teen char panch che sat aath na na so these things have to have an aesthetic beauty and that is known as rudari without a hey r u d a a r y and i mentioned that because the other word is very similar and a lot of people think it's the same which is ruhdari which is the passion the feeling the emotional content and if you spoke to really good very competent musicologists and musicians they will tell you it's okay to screw up a rag it's okay to miss a beat it's even okay to have ugly aesthetics but it's not okay not to have passion you must first and foremost sing about passion a week or so ago the bbc interviewed me about noor jaha it's on my facebook page the recording and they asked me to compare noor jaha and lata so instead of resorting to being pakistani versus indian i said let's look at all the parameters of music rag tal le and co- <laughs> compare the two and some were good in one and some were good in the other but the area where noor jahan edged her out by miles was the ruhdari the passion with which she sang otherwise lata is a very competent musician a very very competent musician but the way noor jahan could communicate your, her emotions the way she could show love and hatred and jealousy nobody else can do that and there in lies the beauty of noor jaha singh if you look only on rag she and lata are at the same level lay she is a little head but i think lata is more surreal but this passion this rudari this feeling takes her 
miles and ahead of Lata. So we have four components, Ragdari, knowing Rag well, Lekari, knowing time well, Rudari, having aesthetic beauty, and Ruhdari, having spiritual content. <coughs> okay? The next topic is a very simple one, what is a gharana? Again, it is not the gharana that we use in our everyday, which means a home or homestead or something of that nature. A gharana is a group of musicians that have the same philosophy, ideology, feeling and practice of music. They can be related, they are often related, but they don't have to be. But what they are related by is a simple philosophy, not just of performing music, but even of teaching it, even of learning music, they do it the same way. So if we were to define it, we would say a gharana is a school of music where musicians subscribe to a single style, performance technique, teaching method, theory, philosophy and ideology of music. That's what binds them together. We have gharanas of sitar and veena, like the Meher, Beenkar, Jaipur gharanas. Of course, we have the vocal gharanas, the Agra, Sham Churasi, Patiala, Gawaliar, um, Dilli, Kabal Bache, Dabla, Ajrara, Banaras, <laughs> Dilli, Punjab, these gharanas. Unless anyone has an interest, I'm not going into, go into the detail of each gharana. Does anyone have an interest? Which gharana? Okay, Patiala is very popular in Pakistan because Ustad Fateh Ali Khan, Ustad Amanat Ali Khan, who were extremely popular at a time and very competent musicians, belong to the Patiala Gharana. And in my opinion, one of the four greatest musicians of recording history, Ustad Bade Ghulam Ali Khan, was also a scene of the Patiala Gharana. Funnily enough, it's one of the most junior gharanas of music. It's the most recent, it's the most junior one. So what the advantage that they had was that they were able to learn from different people. Like they learned from Tanras Khanji of Dilli Gharana. Then they learned from, uh, the, the founders were Jarnel Fatah Ali Khan, Karnel Ali Baksh Khan. And their grandsons are Fatah Ali Khan, Amanat Ali Khan. And then we have Shafkat and all these kids. And then we have Bade Ghulam Ali Khan, his son, Raza Ali Khan, and then his grandsons. So Patiala is popular, one, because some of the greatest, most popular musicians Two, they have a way of making music easy. They always say that we have to audience ko dekh ke, dekh ke aata hai ki kitna mushkil, kitna asaan gana hai. And aesthetically, their compositions are extremely good. Like the Rudari aspect is extremely good, even to the point that they dress up very well and appropriately, if you notice. Like if you were to compare Ustad Ghulam Hussain Shaggan, who would show up in the most austere of manners, and Fateh Ali Amanat Ali, they would stow up very festively. And I can't say enough about this. Being on stage is not being simple. It is a performance. It is a celebration. You need to be decked up. You need to be glittering. You need to be shimmering. There is a, it is disrespectful of a musician towards the audience, towards his art, not to dress up for a performance because it's a feast for all the senses. So they are very theatrical too. Yeah. Munawar Ali Khan bete the, Raza Ali Khan pote the. Unke pote the, ha. Unke bete the Munawar Ali Khan. Okay. Ji. No, it's not true. No. Gawaliar does. That's it. Gawaliar traces back to Tansen. Ji. Sorry. Yes, that goes back to uh, that, but that's more of Veena than Sitar. Ji? Roshanara Begum. Uh, there are people who started singing in the Kirana style one generation before Ratan Sangeet Khan Sahib Abdul Karim Khan. But the singer who established Kirana as a proper school was Ratan Sangeet Khan Sahib Abdul Karim Khan. He was the father of Roshanara Begum, which is a fact not known to many people. Yeah, he was the, her father. Okay. No, no, he was her father uh, 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 with uh, Chanda Begum, who was his mother. And uh, Roshanara, in my opinion, is the greatest classical vocalist Pakistan has seen. 
by all means her singing is in my opinion as good if not better than uh, ratan sangeet khan sahab and i'll tell you why better most of actually all the recordings of abdul karim khan that are available are 150 seconds long because that was the duration of the longest record available at the time singing a rag for 2 min minutes and a half is not as difficult as singing it for 30 minutes most of the recordings of roshanara begum are 30 to 35 minutes long now one thing i should mention here which is an aside is that i collect music and by that's uh, actually an understatement i'm a vociferous collector i've digitized about 80000 hours of music and i have another 140000 to go from tapes from spools from records the reason i mention that is i share freely and with any and everyone who wants so if anyone needed roshan ara begum or bade gulam ali khan or nusrat fateh ali khan or his father fateh ali khan all they have to do is email me i have i have no problem sharing because so much effort time love and money has gone into digitizing this music i want as many people to benefit from it as they can so i'm also on youtube yeah yeah so any time you know, sometimes people like shy i just thrust music on them i email it to them you must listen because a lot of this is on spools Uh, and i have spent times with women's nail polish like my wife's joining things because those tapes crack over years but the good thing is once you have them in mp3 you are in good shape you can share over email you can copy without degradation yeah uh, i have some of them but um, that's the kind of space that's needed for that and the kind of transfer capability i think would make my job even more difficult and right now i feel very old because i have about maybe 20000 uh, hours of music which would be about um, like 18 years if i did nothing else i would continuously listen for 18 years to music and i don't have that much time left so that's a very sad thing <laughs> that i can't listen to all my music in my lifetime but any and everyone who asked me for it and i have akhtari bai roshan ara begum's gohar uh, jaan malika jaan they will all they will need to do is send me the name of the singer and i'll have it to them okay so any time okay i'll usually send by dropbox i mean to the point that if you know farid ayaz kawal when they came to my home of, i think 3 months ago i played stuff of their father for them that they had actually forgotten the lyrics to So they took about, I think, more than two thousand items of their father, Munshi Razieuddin, from me. Uh, you will never find them, and uh, I also sent you some stuff which were the Lahore recordings, which nobody has. But now you do. <laughs> so, yeah, but yours and mine don't overlap, which is a good thing. The ones that you have are from your Karachi private mehfils. The ones I have are from the Gujranwala private mehfils, so they don't overlap. In fact, I was with their sons this morning, and I told them that I have about 14 songs of Munshi Saab, which are wedding songs, and they should be making a CD out of those wedding songs. Yeah. So now we come back to what I was talking about: that we have gharana, and the next topic is the genres of music. You may be hearing things like, if anyone is getting NC, we are almost done with 85% of the presentation, maybe 90. you may hear terms like khayal dhrupad thumri tappa sadra and what i want to do is i want to define these not because people don't know them because but because i think we need to have clarity there was one thing that einstein said if you cannot explain something in three lines or less you don't know it so nothing is that complicated and one of the ways i always teach my course since the second time i'm here at t2f I try to make it simple because it is simple. And what we see a lot in the world of music is that people who know music are either musicologists or musicians. Musicians are reluctant to share because they are afraid somebody will copy their music and benefit from it. And a lot of other people who know music use it um, unfortunately to establish their intellectual, social standing, their superiority. they would make it more difficult to explain it to you it's not a difficult thing for god's sake if it was difficult i won't understand it so it's a very simple thing 
So the goal in my presentations is to make it simple. So if it's repetitive, please bear with me because I just want to make sure that all of us have clear, accurate, and succinct definitions of these things without any mystery forcibly added to them. Fair? So this is another painting, okay. Now these are some of the major ones and you can pick which ones we go through. Bhajan, Chaiti, Dadra, Dhrupad, Geet, Ghazal, Gospel music, and I don't even know what that last one. Gurbani, Hamd, Hori, Kafi, Kajri, Khayal, Kirtan, Marsiya, Mankabat, Nath, Nohwa, Kissa, Kawali, Sadra, Soz, Tappa, Tarana, Thumri. Which one does someone not know? So what should we begin with? Sadra, okay. Actually, that's a really good one to start with because Sadra is one of the older music traditions. And a few, uh, I think months or years ago, we had a song on Coke studio, Kangana, which was in Rag Malkos, the same rag that he played by Farid Ayaz. Ghazal in their things because they wanted to sing something well, but they didn't, they were not invited into big rich homes anymore because the Nawabs were sucked out of every penny they had by the queen. And <laughs> there was no thing. So they started singing Ghazal, but they also knew really good Kathak. So what they would do is, uh, between one antra and the next, the good-looking girl would sing up. Uh, the, it was always the less good-looking girl who would be the singer and the good-looking one who was the dancer, for obvious reasons, because you see her. And in between two ghazals, she would do a toda or a tukra, which is a composed or a paran or a gut from Kathak. And uh, like we were saying, ta thaya thaya tunga kirte, ta ta ka tunga dig 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 thai ta ta thai ta ta thai ta ta thai. And why would we do that? Because it would give a chance to a girl who had spent a better part of 10 years learning Katha. So over the years, this evolved into Laggi, which is known as Thaduni in Punjab and Laggi elsewhere. So this is just a tidbit because it's relatively unknown. It's also the part of my dissertation. <laughs> so, okay. So Kavali we'll skip and that is the end of our presentation but we'll remember something. We started with Hindustani Sangeet which was North India and Pakistan, Karnatic was South India. We said that the basis of music was Sur, Sare, Gama, Padha, Nisa, there were seven of them. Two Surs had only one f uh, uh, form, five Surs had two forms each. Surs were used under certain rules to make a rag. Rags were classified into ten, ten thoughts. La was tempo, there were five of them. Mad, Balampat, Ati Balampat, Drut, Anudrut. Gharana was a group of musicians adhering to the same ideology and philosophy. The Adza were Ragdari, Lekari, Rudari and Ruhdari. And then we had the Asnafe Mosaki, which were the Chaiti, the Thumri, the Ghazal, the Tappa and so on. That's it, if you have questions, I'll be happy to answer them. <laughs> Hanji. Really? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. We'll tell you. <laughs> Sorry. This the entire system that you described, yeah. I'm just curious to know how it, how and over time, how it came to be codified as this, the single system of Northern Indian it music. It wasn't codified, to be honest. It, and it hasn't been. It has been codified just as a consequence, as an incidental happening, other than the establishment of the thoughts by V and Bhat Kande. Nothing has been established. It has been like a tradition that's been passed on and it's been passed on so faithfully that it's become well known and codified to use the word. And one of the things that is funny that I recently did, I was at the Library of Congress and I was going through some of the original works of um, Amir Khusro and then I got them translated because it's Persian, you and I cannot understand, it's like 800 year old Persian. And some of those songs I uh, spoke to uh, uh, Farid Ayaz ji. Okay, and these are songs which are 40 pages long, 20 pages long, 
about in 30 or so books and he knew every single one of them without literally a word misplaced so the point here to remember is that these people have preserved and passed on the knowledge so faithfully that after 800 years Yeah, of, of course. And uh, that's... Uh, yeah, but it is very faithful. Like if you and I were to have a conversation and then you narrated it to somebody just now, a couple of words would change. But eight, nine hundred years is a very, very long time not to have even a single word changed. Yeah. دیکھیں ہوتا اس طرح تھا کہ اگر ایک راگ گایا گیا ہے جس طرح درباری راگ جو تھا there was an ancient راگ known as کانڈا and تانزین جی made a couple of changes and presented it in اکبر's code اکبر رائے liked it so much that he named it درباری and it was sung so often that everybody who wanted favor with اکبر who wanted to become a court singer of اکبر wanted to sing درباری and hence their body became the rag it was. Yeah, and their body is still one of the most popular rags in Pakistan. It's in, I mean, you, you may have heard Kuba Koo Phel Gai Baad Shana Sai Ki from um, Parveen Shakir's Ghazal by Mehdi Hassan, uh, Noor Jahan's song Bul Bulo Matro Yaha, their body then, Kain Dene Naina Tere Kol Rehna Again Noor Jahan, their body is very popular in Pakistan. It continues to. Yeah. Anything else? Ji. I can have, if I know the answers, uh, I will end. <laughs> okay, uh, should I say one by one or? Sure, I just a as you wish. Okay, uh, there is a thing which is called triplet that we play in piano and in Western music. So, can you explain comparatively with the with this knowledge? I does it fall in Rudani or what? Can you just explain okay. that? Uh, one, there is no exact equivalent of the triplet, but it will fall in Ragdari. Okay. But if you do it with passion, it would fall in Rudari. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. okay. And my uh, second question is, uh, uh, you know, every single instrument is tuned to 440 hertz, but you know, all the classical music is based on the natural tuning. Yeah. So, is the contemporary classical music is following the particular natural frequency or just they are following that particular, you know, standard tuning? Okay, it depends from singer to singer. In Pakistan, actually, we follow the natural one. We use the higher frequency, which is yes. like in 456. Four, four, 440 four, hertz is, 432 yeah. is actually natural. Yeah, and then and we use the, the higher 440 one. 440 yes. I didn't remember the exact megahertz. I prefer the higher one, but it's a matter of uh, personal choice. The real difference is actually in the microtones. Mm -hmm. You are allowed to change the frequency, but from one note, sa to re, in our music, we have 22 microtones, known as the shrutis. But in Western scale from Do to Re, we have only 20. And there is the difference. But it's a very imperceptible difference. I certainly cannot tell it with my ear. But up until 1981, All India Radio, and before that, uh, Pakistan Radio, had banned harmonium. You could not take a harmonium inside radio station up until 81 because people uh, felt that it was wrong to use an instrument that had 20 microtones instead of 22. Mm. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah. And you said that Kangna is a Sadra. Sadra. Uh, but I thought it was performed in Kavali style or... No, Kavali is not a genre. Kavali is a school of music where a group of people sing together to create a spiritual atmosphere and unite someone spiritually, corporeally with their loved one. And it can, a kawali can be a bhajan, it can be a kafi, it can be a ghazal. But a kawali is not a genre. Yeah. Performed by a kawal, of course, in kawali style. But it was a sadra. It was a sadra. Kawal. Sadra. Sorry? Sansho Ki Mala, is it a bhajan or a... It's a geet. It's a geet. And it's sung... Uh, Kawali is not a genre. Let's... It's...
Kavali, you can have bhajan, geet, kafi, tappa, khayal, even dhrupad. So, when you sing geet in the Kavali Ang, it's Sanso Ki Mala. Yeah. Okay, ji. thank you so much. Ji. Achha. Or koi cheese? Oh, I fake it really well. <laughs> I just wanted to know if we can have uh, an email that we can yeah, reach uh, it's you a, at. Uh, it's actually on the last slide, but it's very simple. Ali Adnan at hotmail.com. A L L Y A D N A N. And I'm extremely responsive. Thank you. Yeah. A L L Y Alpha Lima Lima Yankee Adnan A D N A N at hotmail.com. Tihai is something uh, that's played three times and ends in sum, like da 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 one two three four five. Now there's a tihai within a tihai, which is nine. Do you know what that's called? Chakardar. Or koi cheese ji. But if you need recordings, you need slides, you'll find me very uh, easy to deal with in those things. Yeah. 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 What's a good way to know about all the and what the recordings are? Like, you know, you mentioned several names on the Yeah. What I can, um, uh, a lot of people, including me, write very, I, I write uh, about 12 articles a month in a newspaper okay. Express Tribune, Dawn, Friday Times, and it's mostly about music. I think that's a good place to start. Some, always. One. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And at the high, you can start from any beat. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, depending on what your mood is like. Anything else? Yeah. Oh, that I don't know. It's from ever. Yeah. I, I know. It's kind of like why we have one eye, ever two eyes and one nose. I, I don't know. No. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being patient.